Thank you. Yeah, so I'm a documentary filmmaker and I always get asked what I make films about and I always find it really difficult to answer that question. And partly that's because I have made quite a few films about sport and I feel quite self-conscious about this. And I think that's because I feel that in film and in the arts generally maybe that sport and maybe particularly football is perceived to be quite lowbrow. And I'm an uptight documentary filmmaker who wants to make films that are taken seriously. So I'm going to talk a bit about why I make football films and hopefully make myself feel a bit better about that. <laughs> so uh, I arrived at sport as a subject when I made uh, a film about athletes as my graduation film from the National Film School. And this wasn't out of a particular interest in athletics. I wasn't a big fan of it, but I came to it because I wanted to make a film about people overcoming limits and confronting something in themselves. And to do that, you need a subject where that inner struggle is visible. And in sport, the psychological and the physical are sort of perfectly entwined. And I found that filming athletes training and competing uh, was an amazing way to explore these themes that interested me. Um, but then the first film I made about football was a short called Manchester United, The Religion, which was about obsessive football fans and where Sprinters was a visual study of athletes. In this film, I interviewed the, the subjects and it sort of became a therapy session where I tried to understand what drives their behaviour and I'm going to play a clip from that. I've not missed a, a home match since uh, Old Trafford since 1974, which is now approximately 1,100 consecutive home matches. Over me period of time, I've missed uh, games here, there and everywhere, so it's, I've not got a perfect record of going, but, you know, 40 years of not missing a home game is quite good. Oh, I've had uh, countless numbers of jobs because uh, it's really hard to get a job where you can get all the time off. I mean, there's not many bosses that'll say, I, need, I, I, can, I can have Wednesday off, Saturday off, Sunday off, Monday off, Tuesday off, is there? So. My obsession by religion is, is Manchester United, and that's where I get my thrills from. I'd say it is a religion. I mean, I've never been one for going to church or anything like that, but I think, as the flag says, there is a, a banner at Old Trafford that says Manchester United, the religion, and it is actually a religion. I think there's Judaism, Islamism, Christianism and Manchester Unitedism. <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> so I think uh, Maradona 86, which was the most recent film I made, lies somewhere between these two films because it focuses on the central character with a sort of similar level of visual scrutiny, uh, like I applied to the athletes, but it's definitely also about this sort of obsessive, passionate and religious nature of football. Uh, making a film about Maradona wasn't actually my idea, I was asked if I wanted to do it by a producer called John Batsek, who's a huge Maradona sort of obsessive, and I really wanted to work with John. And I sort of then realised that I actually didn't really like Maradona very much when I looked, reminded myself, and that obviously presented a bit of a problem. And when I started looking at the footage of Maradona, I got quite uh, worried because I was struggling to see what I could bring to it. It's the first time I've made a film using archive, which on one hand is nice because you make the film without having to leave the house, but it brings lots of limitations and you have to make this footage yours somehow. Um, the fact that the footage is so iconic uh, only added to my feeling of concern and sort of working with something that carries a huge amount of weight with it and I was aware of not wanting to just re-edit it and stick my name at the end. Um, but a couple of things helped me find my way into it. And the more I looked at Maradona, the more I sort of was aware of him as a performer, as much as a footballer. And everything seemed sort of operatically charged and emotional. And I sort of saw that this could be a film about the theatre of football and Maradona's role within that, which I found really interesting.
So another important aspect was discovering the writing of Eduardo Galeano, who's uh, this guy, who's a Uruguayan writer. And, you know, I didn't have any interest in going down the, the usual road of interviewing Peter Shilton or Terry Butcher about how they feel about Maradona. Uh, we kind of wanted the film to try and get to the essence of him and felt that a literary voice would be able to deliver some insight and give the film gravitas. Um, and Galliano has written a lot about Latin American history and has a sort of beautiful, poetic approach to non-fiction. And he's written a lot about football. And for example, there's a quote here that sort of is the kind of thing that makes me feel better about making football films. So I found it really interesting working his ideas into the film, combining his words with the archive from 86. And I've got a clip from early in the film which shows how they, they work together. Gil, idiota. Aprende de Martino, aprende de Boyer. The pleasure of demolishing idols is directly proportional to the need to erect them. All over the world, plenty of people were ready to celebrate the fall of that arrogant interloper that parvenu fugitive from hunger, that greaser who had the insolent audacity to swagger and boast. Maradona, 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 Maradona. But in the frigid soccer of today's world, which detests defeat and forbids all fun, that man was one of the few who proved that fantasy too can be effective. So narration in documentary is quite often used to explain things or to help with the exposition, but I wanted to use it to present ideas, Galliano's ideas, with the archive telling the story and using news reports and the match commentary to take us back into the moment. And I really wanted to get the Argentinian perspective on Maradona, but it was almost impossible to access anything from their video archives. And we ended up having to track people down off YouTube who had recorded stuff onto VHS tapes back in 1986 and get, get them to send us stuff. And we got clips like, like this. The search for archives then becomes really obsessive and you end up digging up all this amazing stuff. Um, and I really wanted footage that surprised me in some way and that I hadn't seen before. And at one point, one of the researchers found this camera angle of Maradona's second goal against England, which was sitting unnoticed on YouTube. And we sent it around news agencies trying to find where it had come from. And then the discovery of this new angle became this international news story. And we didn't even end up using the clip. Um, but, you know, we found this clip of Maradona doing doing keepy uppies with this giant inflatable globe, which <laughs> I thought would be a great image to end the film on, sort of perfect. <laughs> uh, and it's a direct echo of this scene from a Charlie Chaplin film. So I ended up using the same music um, in my film, which gave the film, the, my film this sort of operatic feeling, which I really wanted because, you know, I think Maradona's story has this emotional and sort of mythic quality. And I think he personified the idea that anything is possible in football and he played and behaved as if there were no limits, which amazed people and pissed people off in equal measure. Uh, 
I think despite the money that controls football and the predictability over who will win, it retains a capacity for surprise because it's an outlet for unrestrained and irrational emotions. And in football you're never quite sure when someone will do something outrageous and maybe that's what it's all about. So I'm going to end with this moment from the film which probably sums up football's ability to make people lose their minds and maybe the question is in what other aspect of life could this explosion of joy take place? <laughs> Thanks a lot.